Okay, in the previous video, we looked at how to set up the problem for an infinite sheet of current where the current is moving out of the page and we're trying to find the magnetic field. We are solving this using Ampere's law and we're going to use it based on symmetry. So we're following the steps in this cookbook. And so far we've found the symmetry above and below the plane. We've determined the direction of the magnetic field, right? We determine the direction by approximating the infinite sheet of current as many wires together. And you can see this in the first video if you need to go back and revisit it. And then we determine that this uh, sheet is going to be infinitely thin. And so we just need to, the only region that we're going to need to solve for the magnetic field is above and below. So now let's move on to finding the Amperian loop. So let's consider this possibility, all right? We know that the Amperian loop needs to be either constant or zero. Okay, so I'm going to move this here, and we see that the Amperian loop either needs to be constant or zero. So we have two options for this, constant or zero. So the first option is that the Amperian loop can be constant in along the loop. And the second option is that the Amperian loop can have a magnetic field of zero. So taking a Amperian loop, let's choose one that is roughly in the same shape as the conductor. Okay. <clears throat> and so let's choose this as our possible Amperian loop. And let's check to see if this works or not. Now, on this Amperian loop, we should remember that we are solving an equation for the magnetic field crossed with this DL being equal to the current. And we already determined that the form of the magnetic field is plus or minus some constant HY, and it's plus or minus depending on whether we're above or below. <clears throat> so the reason we should consider this is that on the Amperian loop, we're looking for places where the magnetic field is either one constant or two zero. And this is going to take into this, we're going to want to look at this because some aspects of this integration are going to show that the magnetic field does not add in some of the directions. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's look at the top of this loop, okay? So along the top here, we can see that the DL is going to be y hat dy. And that is going to be the case for the bottom also. Now, what about the sides? So on the sides here, DL will be in the Z direction. So if our loop, if our Amperian loop needs to be either constant or zero along the loop, the, what we should look at now is for our form, for the form oops, of the magnetic field that we've determined, we can see that along the top and bottom, we are going to have h, y, dy. And remember, this is a constant that we already determined. So the top of this loop, this top of this loop, we can consider part of the Amperian loop because it's a constant. Now, what about the bottom of the loop? Is it going to add to 
our current? Is it going to, is this part going to add to this? And what we're going to see is that on this, these vertical parts, HY is actually equal to zero and it won't add into this integral at all. So when we have y hat hy, and see we have this as our dl, when we take this dot product, right, this is not going to contribute to our calculation of the current at all. So this is going to be an acceptable Ampérian loop because it satisfies the two conditions that we set forth earlier. The, the parts of the Ampérian loop either need to be constant with the magnetic field or zero with the magnetic field. So we've found an acceptable Ampérian loop for this infinite sheet of current at this point. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to finish the calculation by solving for each side of this equation, this integral equation.